Hi, I'm Ramona Van Dyke, an MD. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people just like you obtain optimum health by adopting a whole foods plant-based lifestyle. Today, we're gonna to talk about curcumin, or is it curcumin, a compound found in the spice turmeric. Natural products have been used in traditional medicines for years. Some of them have even shown promise as a source of components for new drugs and medicines. One of these is turmeric. Turmeric, otherwise known as curcuma longa, is cultivated in tropical and subtropical regions around the world. It originated in India, Southeast Asia, and Indonesia, and has been used in their cooking for centuries. Today, it's used as a coloring and flavoring agent and in curries and mustards. It's traditionally been used for medicinal purposes in countries such as China and India for the treatment of jaundice and other liver ailments. Its popularity is exploding in the Western world. If you do a simple PubMed search, you'll see there's thousands of studies that are done every year. Over 1,200 studies on curcumin were published in 2016 alone. Why? Why is that? What makes curcumin so special? Well, it has a wide range of pharmacological activities. Some of these are antioxidant, antiprotozoal, antibacterial, antimalarial, antivenom agent, anti-inflammatory, anti-proliferative, anti-angiogenic, anti-tumor, anti-aging, and it's a wound healing accelerant. It's been used to treat ulcers, parasitic infections, various skin diseases, autoimmune diseases, and it's been used as a remedy for the common cold or flu. Whoa. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll go through all of these properties in detail in a series of upcoming videos so you can thoroughly understand why curcumin is so great. But before we move on, I have to address one thing because I know I may get a lot of comments regarding this if I don't. How is curcumin pronounced? Is it curcumin or is it curcumin? Inquiring minds want to know. I researched this and honestly, I don't think there's a right or a wrong pronunciation. I'm gonna go with curcumin or maybe curcumin, I don't know, we'll just switch. But on to the science. As we discussed, the pharmacologic activity of turmeric has been attributed mainly to curcuminoids. These consist of curcumin and two related compounds named dimethoxycurcumin and bismethoxycurcumin. The curcumin compound itself is actually oil-based. It's not water-soluble. This is very important. It makes isolation and absorption of the compound difficult to achieve. The first biologic activity we will be discussing is neuroprotective effects and how to use them in neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's disease. The pathogenesis of Alzheimer's is multifactorial with a complex combination of genetic and environmental components, but we do know that toxic reactions such as inflammation, glutaminergic toxicity, and dysfunction of mitochondrial activity play a big role. Curcuminoids have been shown to be neuroprotective via multiple mechanisms. It does this by reducing high levels of nitric oxide, thereby reducing neuronal damage. It also prevents post-ischemic brain neutrophil inflammation, thereby reducing production of free radicals and reactive oxygen species. Three, it favorably alters mitochondrial membrane potential. Four, it also reduces ischemia after brain infarct by modulating apoptosis and preventing brain edema and many other mechanisms. Next, we're gonna discuss the antioxidant activity of curcumin. Curcuminoids pose powerful antioxidant activity as demonstrated in many in vitro tests and in vivo trials. Antioxidant function can be explained by five main mechanisms. Single electron transfer, radical attic formation, hydrogen atom transfer from neutral curcumin, hydrogen atom transfer from deprotonated curcumin, and sequential proton loss electron transfer. These are all various mechanisms. We have the antioxidant effect. Next, we're gonna quickly discuss the anti-cancer activity of curcumin. There's many mechanisms that this occurs, but mainly, curcumin appears to induce cancer cell arrest in the G2 or M phase of the cellular growth cycle. It's been shown to inhibit adhesion, migration, and invasion of human breast cancer cells. Specific types of cancer where curcumin has shown promise is breast, especially HER2 new positive breast cancer, colon, fibrosarcoma, esophageal, non-small cell, and small cell lung cancer. Okay, on to the cardioprotective effects of curcumin. Curcumin has been shown to have extensive cardioprotective effects against diabetic cardiovascular complications, cardiac hypertrophy, and myocardial infarction. Okay, what about those radioprotective effects of curcumin? Interestingly enough, curcumin has been shown to be radioprotective to normal cells, but radiosensitive to cancer cells, meaning when exposed to radiation, cancer cells suffer and non-cancer cells suffer less when curcumin is on board. 
Scientists hypothesize this is due to the G2 checkpoint abrogation. Damaged cells are arrested in the G2 phase and they're subjected to radiation and then they get radiation-induced chromatid breaks. Of course, the overall radioprotective or radiosensitizing effect would depend on the cell cycle status of the cells at the time of the irradiation. Okay, on to the prevention of sexually transmitted diseases and contraception. Scientists are currently testing a contraceptive vaginal gel made from curcumin. This gel has a dual function. Its antiviral and antibacterial activity theoretically prevent the spread of sexually transmitted disease, and the contraceptive effect is an added bonus. Curcumin has been shown to inhibit the growth of microbes via microbicidal activity. It actually kills the microbes that cause aerobic vaginitis, bacterial vaginitis, and yeast infection. Also, it's been shown to inhibit the transcription of human papilloma virus, HPV, which is one of the most commonly transmitted sexual infections. And in some cases, this infection leads to cervical cancer. These scientists also found that curcumin compound completely blocked forward sperm motility. That's huge. It should be taken as a bit of a caution for anyone having difficulties conceiving. In that scenario, it may be better to use the compound in moderation. Remember that in the beginning of this video, I stated that curcumin is not water-based. That means there's difficulty making the compound bioavailable. It's tough to maximize nutrient absorption. To that end, scientists are developing a vaginal delivery method of curcumin via self-emulsifying drug delivery systems, or SEDS, S-E-D-D-S. You see, the vaginal mucosa seems to be perfectly adapted for absorbing chemicals, especially if those chemicals happen to be curcumin mixed with a surfactant, which spontaneously forms nano droplets and allows high permeation through the mucus layer. All right, on to the anti-inflammatory properties of curcumin. Some inflammation is good. For example, when we cut ourselves or have a wound, the inflammation response kicks in, thereby allowing us to heal. Inflammation be can become a big problem if it becomes chronic. Persistent inflammation can activate the immune system for long durations of time, which is bad for our health. In fact, chronic inflammation has been shown to be a major factor in the progression of obesity, type 2 diabetes, arthritis, pancreatitis, cardiovascular, neurodegenerative, and metabolic diseases, as well as cancer. How does it do all that? Well, extensive research has shown that inflammation is associated with alteration of signaling pathways, and this results in increased levels of inflammatory markers, lipid peroxides, and free radicals. We know the inflammatory response is quite complex, and to this day, we're still learning and making progress on understanding the molecular workings of it. But we do know curcumin has the ability to mediate multiple anti-inflammatory effects for the treatment of various chronic inflammatory diseases. Specific inflammatory diseases in which curcumin has been trialed include obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, neurodegenerative diseases, cerebral edema, allergies, bronchial asthma, inflammatory bowel diseases such as Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, scleroderma, autoimmune deficiency syndrome or AIDS, and certain types of cancers. Ah. Okay, a <laughs> new topic. How does curcumin protect against arsenic and chromium toxicity? Arsenic is a human carcinogen and it's a potent hepatotoxin. It poses a serious health hazard to humans and other animals worldwide. It's commonly found in rice, which is a whole other topic we'll do a video on another day. But, by the way, in case you're wondering, basmati rice grown in California has the lowest arsenic content of any rice. Anyway. Because of curcumin's direct and indirect antioxidant activity, it's been shown to decrease renal, liver, and mitochondrial damage associated with arsenic toxicity. What about the wound healing properties of curcumin? One study demonstrated that if you take gauze, you soak it in a curcumin nanocomposite gel, it retains moisture and it acts against infectious microorganisms because it's antibacterial and it's non-toxic to your healthy tissue and to the body as a whole. So there's a lot more research going on for wound care regarding curcumin. So now you might want to be taking curcumin by the truckload, but you want to know how much curcumin is safe. Can you overdose? Well, studies published demonstrate that it's quite safe. Doses up to eight grams per day have been shown to be safe. Minimal toxicity has been reported, which is in the form of gastritis or a sore stomach hypoglycemia or low blood sugar in diabetics, and an increased bleeding risk. Always make sure your doctor is okay with you taking specific supplements or eating certain foods. 
and try to remember to eat your turmeric with black pepper and nuts to increase the bioavailability of curcumin. More to come on this, an entire video on curcumin bioavailability is in the pipeline. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you learned something valuable and applicable to your individual health journey. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to show us some real support, subscribe. We also love hearing from you, so please comment below with your thoughts and questions on the material covered in this video or any future topics you want us to cover. Until next time, aloha.